All right, so now we've got our foundation laid, we're going to start building our components. And we're going to start with our generic content container and make this look as nice as possible. And during that process, we're going to learn a few SAS techniques. So we're going to learn things like nesting. We're also going to look at nesting things like uh, hover, so pseudo selectors. And we're also going to look at placeholders as well, uh, which is a really efficient way of using or reusing rather uh, CSS styles or SAS styles. So to start with, we're going to write the markup for our container and then we'll jump into styling this. So for our container, then we are going to have a div with a class of container. This is going to contain some content. So for example, a paragraph in here with just some lorem ipsum, let's say 20 words. And at the bottom of this, we're going to have a footer. So we're going to have a div with a class of footer. And we're also going to have an unordered list in here with some links. But we won't include that just yet. We'll add that in in just a moment. So let's just write some content in our footer for now. So we'll say this is a footer. And as you'll imagine at the moment, it doesn't look like much, we just see this. So let's get started on styling this. But before we do that, we want to uh, lay this out in a nice way. So we're going to have a new folder in here. I'm going to call this components. That's just going to store any components within our site individually. So we know exactly where to go when we want to modify them. So in here, I'm going to create a new file. And this is going to be called container.scss. Don't forget that. Uh, underscore prepended there and in here then we can say container and we can start writing styles this is going to get like I said more into uh, some SAS things that we can use so to start with we'll uh, define a background color a border radius and a box shadow to our container but I'm going to create variables for these inside of our variables file just so it's a little easier to modify them if we need to so I'm going to create a new section here called container and inside of here, I'm going to define the container background color. And for this, it's just going to be white. We're going to have a container border radius. So this is pretty much solid. If we want to change this across uh, any components uh, that may be a like a container, we can use that as well. And we're going to define our container shadow which is just going to be zero on the x-axis two pixels on the right it's going to have a zero spread and the background color or the shadow color is going to be black uh, we'll have a point one on the alpha channel so now that we've done that let's apply them to our container within here so we're going to say background color container BG color. We're going to have our border radius, which is going to be five pixels on all edges of our container. So we'll say container border radius. Of course, you could use this value uh, alongside uh, any other values for this property, which we will be looking at in a moment. And we can define our box shadow as well. So we'll say container shadow like that. So obviously because we have watch still running, uh, we have changes detected to this already. So when we refresh, nothing happens because we obviously haven't added it to our app.scss file. So let's include this now. So we'll import, in fact, we'll do this just down here. We'll import components container like that. So now we have a fairly nice looking container. We still have a little bit more to do here. So what we'll do then is back inside of our container.scs file, we're now going to look at nesting selectors. Now, ordinarily, if you wanted to say, apply styles to something within a container, you would do something like this. So we're gonna be creating a content div in just a moment. You would say that you want the content element within container to have these styles. 
but we can get rid of that altogether now we can easily just nest our selectors and these will automatically be generated with css or to css so we can define that we want the content and the footer to perhaps have a padding of 20 pixels i'm not going to define a variable for everything here uh, you can go ahead and decide what you want to define variables for now we don't have this content ele element at the moment this is going to be just here so we're going to say content and we're actually going to place that paragraph within that content so we have two elements within this container we have the content which is going to sit at the top and the footer and because we've applied the 20 pixel padding to both of them we now see the following so this is hitting hitting the top a little bit but don't worry too much about that uh, that will uh, rectify when we have our navigation at the top so we've got all this working what we'll do now is any paragraph elements within our uh, content we want to basically have no spacing at all so no uh, padding and no margin so we could of course say that we want content p to have padding of zero and say this element did have padding and margin we could define both here but what we're going to introduce now is a placeholder and this is going to be stored under our base folder so i'm going to create a new file under here and i'm going to call this placeholders.scss we'll include it into app.css so we don't forget so this is placeholders perfect and inside of our placeholders file we want to define a placeholder and we do this with a percentage sign and then the name of the placeholder so no spacing for example and no spacing is just going to be a generic placeholder that's going to get rid of padding and it's going to get rid of margin as well so we can now use this inside of this container to say that for the paragraph element we want to have no padding and no spacing so it's almost like importing these styles into this selector and to do that we use extend so we're going to extend no spacing and now all that's done is it's applied them styles within here to this so when we refresh we see an error which is fairly useful and that's because this is called placeholder not placeholders so we'll just change that and when we refresh let's just go and check this out placeholders save that and there we go so we're all good to go so we've now got the paragraph uh, with no spacing at all and we now want to style the footer of this so we're going to again nest this so all of these are directly nested under container so anything within container i am going to change the background color of this again you could define a variable for this if you wanted but i'm just going to say f9 fa fa for a nice color a nice gray color and we are going to set the border radius on this as well and we're going to do this zero zero and then we're going to have um, the border radius on the bottom left and the bottom right because otherwise this will overlap and not look great now we already have a container border radius property or a variable rather so we can just reuse this like that so let's just refresh and see what this looks like so it looks a little bit nicer you might not be able to see this depending on your monitor contrast but it's a nice gray color and what you now want to do is create a border on the top just to define this a little bit a little bit nicer so inside of variables then we are going to create a container footer top border variable and for that we are going to set this to one pixel solid and the color of this is going to be e8 e b e d so now we can refresh here uh, we haven't defined it inside of here yet so let's do that now so border top and that's container just remember what we called it footer top border again it's entirely up to you what you define as a variable you you might want complete control and you want variables uh, assigned to the most common things or the or everything it's really entirely up to you so we've now got a nice border at the top there so the container is starting to look uh, pretty nice let's finally just uh, update this paragraph just to include a margin bottom of 10px i know we uh, removed it here but when we go ahead and add our buttons in a little bit later in here when we get to them 
uh, we want a little bit more spacing uh, from this paragraph here. So what we're now going to look at is including in this footer an inline list of links. And this can be a little bit messy and tedious when you're just writing plain CSS, but we're going to make this uh, a little bit nicer. But to do this, we're going to create an entirely new component called an inline list. So under our components directory, let's create inline list.scss and this is basically going to be a ul with a class of inline so let's include this into app css again so components inline list and for the inline list we want another placeholder and this placeholder is just going to be called inline list and the reason we're doing this is this is going to help us if we ever want to manually define uh, the styles anywhere but basically this inline list placeholder will look like this so it will be again a percentage sign inline list from this we're going to extend another placeholder which is that no spacing placeholder we have up here so we want our inline list our unordered list our link list items to have no padding at all so here we can say that we want each list item to be a display of inline block and we want the margin right on each of them list items to be 10 pixels and we've not actually created the markup for this uh, yet so let's go ahead and just do that now so inside of index let's get rid of this footer and let's create a ul with a class of inline let's create uh, some list items with some anchors in so we'll just say item one and we'll do the same for each one here so now we have a unordered list with three list items. So what we're going to do now is within our inline list.css, we want to extend the placeholder that we've created. Extend inline list. And then for each of the list items in here, we're going to set the font size to 0.9m. So we're not controlling things like the font size from our placeholder. This is purely just uh, not visual but it's put purely structural so we're displaying them as inline blocks we're setting the margin on them but for the actual inline list component we're setting things like the font size and then we can nest further so we've got uh, two nests technically here the outer and then the first nest and the second nest so this will be um, an unordered list with a class of inline any allies within that are going to have a font size of 0.9 m's and any anchor within the list items themselves are going to have a text decoration of none. So now that we've got that in place, we have it included in app.scss and we'll see them go in line like this. So it's pretty nice. Now that's just a generic um, component really for any inline list. We could use that for uh, links in our footer. We could use that for links in our header. We could use this pretty much anywhere. The point is now we have a component which is nicely defined, uses this inline list placeholder, which we can also use for other components, not just this inline list component. So we have the reusability of code and the flexibility to do what we want here. Obviously, this might require some minor tweaking if you wanted to do something else, but the fundamentals are here that we can reuse this as much as we can at the moment. So the next thing that I want to do then is when I hover over these, I want the background to change to a darker color. I'm not going to define that within my inline list uh, component because that will mean that then all inline lists will have a hover and we might not want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to define this under our actual container. So we're going to say any inline list within a container and any anchor within that we're going to give a padding of five pixels uh, on the top and the bottom and 10 pixels on the left and the right just to space that anchor out a little bit so it's more clickable and then we're going to give these a border radius of six pixels and we'll see why because what we're now going to do is have a pseudo selector which is hover and you'll notice this is defined in a slightly different way usually we do something like a hover like that but because we're using uh, nesting here, we need this ampersand here uh, to signal that it's a pseudo selector. So 
Uh, these won't have changed too much. They've just spread out a little bit more. So we're defining this, remember, within this container, not globally for inline lists. And when we do hover, we want the background color to change to 444. And we want the color of the text to change to white. So now we have the following. So really nice inline list, which is a global style. And then we've specifically styled um, these inline lists within our containers. So that might have felt like a lot of work, but you can now see the benefit of doing this, how much cleaner the code is rather than just having lots and lots of lines of CSS. We've got a reusable component here. We've got reusable placeholders here, and we've got more variables, which you can obviously add to if you want to go ahead and just quickly update. So next up, we're going to look at styling the buttons, which we are going to place just under here.